I spent the last episode talking about the 300 AAC Blackout cartridge. And I took some time to review a rifle that was a futile attempt to create an AAC or Q Honey Badger. Well, my good buddy Jarhead caught wind of what I was doing around on the YouTubes and offered to let me borrow one of his 300 Blackout guns to show all y'all. So, we can thank Jarhead for the honor of bringing you the Q Sugar Weasel. Now, before I get into the gun, I want to toss out some props to Jarhead. He is an actual Marine that served in Iraq and Afghanistan. He saw a lot of shit over there, gave blood, and lost friends during those conflicts. So, while it is very cool of Jarhead to loan me this here gun to show all y'all, I consider it a far greater honor to call Jarhead my friend. Because, unlike my pussy ass... He is a real American. He has pretty fine taste in firearms, as you can tell. So if any of y'all thought I was flexing when I mumbled my way through my MPX video, take some comfort in knowing that my friends have stuff that makes my collection look like a stack of yeet cannons. So the Sugar Weasel is meant to be Q's poor man's honey badger. And that makes me laugh, given that the MSRP on the Sugar Weasel is $1,999. Are you okay? Mm. I'm fine, I just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. And if you want another laugh, go ahead and Google Sugar Weasel. I don't recommend you do that at work or with your kids around, by the way. The boys at Q have a pretty dark sense of humor. Now, the barrel and the gas block are the exact same as what's on the Honey Badger. But that's about it. Everything else is completely different. Maybe if we ever get a hold of a real honey badger, we can do a side-by-side -side comparison. But I don't want to get ahead of myself, since I can barely keep one gun in frame with my amateur cinematography. Now, the philosophy at Q is to keep things simple and lightweight. They want to give you everything you need, and take away anything you don't. The pistol, before any accessories, comes in at 4 pounds 11 ounces empty. The gun measures in at 22.25 inches collapsed and 25 inches fully extended. That does not include the silencer, by the way. And it has been well documented, but I will say it anyway. The color scheme of the Honey Badger is actually clear anodizing. The way the clear reacts with the metal gives it the different kind of gold versus silver looks. The logic is that the clear anodizing is the strongest kind of anodizing, and that Ed in any color just weakens it. Those are Q's words, not mine. Q went with this since the Honey Badger was being made for a SOCOM unit, and that was just going to rattle can the gun anyway. Anyway, so we'll stop talking about the Honey Badger for a second. We're going to focus here on this gun. And to do that, we're going to go ass to mouth, because that's how I roll. Starting the ass end, the Sugar Weasel features an SBA4 pistol stabilizing brace. Now, this one is made special to have the same color as the polymer receiver extension of the Honey Badger. It's a cute little touch. Moving forward, it has a standard receiver extension that has clear anodizing to match the same color scheme as the rest of the gun. Moving forward, the lower is a standard forged lower receiver. Again, it is pretty no frills. No flared mag well, no ambidextrous magazine release or bolt catch or any of that. Now, the pistol act originally shipped with a non-ambi safety, but Jarhead is lefty, so he got that swapped out pretty quick for a radiant safety selector with a 45 degree throw. But, like all things, he keeps it ambidextrous. Gun shipped with a Magpul SL grip. Now, I'm not sure if they're still shipping with these based on some of the pictures on the website, but it is simple and minimalist, and if you don't like that, you can swap it out for any other grip you like. I think this one's actually kind of nice. I do like the texture, and it's simple, and it keeps the weight down. The pistol originally shipped with an ALG Advanced Combat Trigger. Nothing wrong with that. Those are very nice single stage, very clean 5 to 5.5 pound triggers. They have a great reset. But I guess Jarhead spent too much time hanging out with me because he swapped out the ALG for a Gasly Super Dynamic Enhanced Trigger. This matches the triggers that were shipping on the Honey Badgers for a while, and so in an attempt to make this as badgery as possible, he went with that upgrade. Now, Q has since been releasing the greatest trigger ever made. Supposedly, it's supposed to come out sometime before we all die. But Q also talks about releasing all kinds of other cool products that never actually come to market. So I take it with a grain of salt. It might be a great trigger when it ever comes out, but 
nobody has the patience to wait around for that kind of shit because we never know if our guns are going to be banned tomorrow, so we got to build them today. That's enough of that rant. For the charging handle, we have a Radian Raptor. Pistol actually shipped with a standard mil-spec charging handle that was clear anodized to match the rest of the gun. But that wasn't ambidextrous enough, so my wrong-headed buddy Jarhead swapped it out. Also, the Honey Badger comes with a Radian Raptor, so it was necessary to keep up with the wannabe theme. If we pop the gun open, take a look at some of the guts and we'll see buffers no frills and everything else about the lower receiver is pretty much no frills got standard ping pong paddle and standard mag release okay the bolting carrier is pretty basic. It feels solid. It's not branded by anybody, so Q might be making these themselves. They might be subbing them out to somebody else, but they are nice bolts. They are not branded any of the MP and all that other testing nonsense. Now up top he has EOTech. This is the EXP S2. He went with this more for the look than the function. Could have gotten away with a micro red dot to cut the weight. Frankly, I'm surprised they didn't put a Trijicon ACOG on here or something like that because he's a big crayon eating bastard. The handguard is the same one that they put on the Honey Badger. It's held on by this little turnbuckle clamp down on the bottom that pins the rail into a groove on the barrel nut. Now, face value, this is a pretty neat concept. But, in practicality, it's kind of overthought and kind of annoying. And I'll tell you why. The barrel nut needs to be the size of Kentucky in order to fit the turnbuckle in there. So that ends up taking up a shit ton of space underneath the rail. Now this is a little nubby rail for a little nubby barrel, and you only get a couple of M-lock slots that you can actually use. And no matter what you do, you're never really going to be able to use some of these M-lock slots, because you're always going to have something that's trying to push on the barrel nut. That's kind of annoying. So in this particular case, some of these screws have to be shaved down in order to fit without them touching against the barrel nut. Just a pain in the ass. So I think this is a little overthought. doesn't need to be a quick detach thing because it's not the kind of part you're taking off in the middle of the field anyway. I would kind of prefer that they would go with a normal size barrel nut, more traditional system, fix it in place. It's probably the one big complaint that I have about the Q is that sometimes their engineers get a little too smart for their own bridges. Where are they? I think they're talking about us. No way. Now that said, Jarhead managed to squeeze on a surefire scout light that's in a reptilia mount. It's got it run into a tape switch on the top of the handguard, which works since this is a pistol, and our confusing laws won't allow him to have any kind of a vertical grip. And because of those same stupid laws, he's limited on a few bits of the Magpul M hand stop kit on the bottom here to keep his hand from floating too much towards the muzzle and rubbing up against the silencer. Now the heart and soul of the sugar weasel is the barrel. And these are seven inch stainless steel barrels with a one in five twist. The fast twist is a relatively new thing that is being done by both SIG and Q. And as a side note, for those that don't know, a lot of the Q boys worked over at SIG Sour for a spell before they ventured off to start up the Q company. And this has led to a bit of a pissing match between the SIG and Q fanboys. I ain't gonna get into any of that because frankly I don't care. Anyway. The 1 in 5 twist is meant to stabilize the heavier subsonic loads, as well as to improve accuracy and expansion of both supersonic and subsonic. This was important since the original 300 AAC blackout cartridge was developed for a 9 inch barrel. So, as you get shorter, such as this weapon or the SIG Rattler, which has a 5.5 inch barrel, you need that faster twist to keep the cartridges effective. The barrel features nicely polished M4 feed ramps. The gas block is adjustable so you can tune the gun to whatever ammo you are using. It's a simplistic jam nut system so that you can loosen the outer screw and then dial in the inner screw until you get it to exactly where you want it and then lock that back down with the outer screw. Personally, I find it to be a little too sensitive and you can start messing around with that thing and get all kinds of carried away. So once you get it where you need it and it shoots reliably with subsonics with a silencer, you leave it alone. 
it might be cycling a little fast with a supersonic round, but, you know, you just live with it. Now, the muzzle end of the barrel is tapered before the threads. And the barrel ships with the Cherry Bomb muzzle brake, which is easily one of the most obnoxious muzzle devices ever constructed. I wish they'd make a normal flash hider, or even just a birdcage style muzzle device, but they insist on being different. Now, in their defense, the device is mostly meant to be a quick attach system for mounting the silencers. And if you use it that way, the muzzle brake ends up becoming a sacrificial blast baffle. My gut is that they spent more time worrying about making a good sacrificial blast barrel than they did worrying about making a good muzzle brake. But that's just my douchey opinion. The cherry bomb is tapered on the front of the threads. So to attach a silencer such as this Q Trash Panda, you just thread it on. Now all the tapers and all that jazz keep this thing so that once it's threaded, you just hand tighten it and it's not going to walk on you no matter what while you're shooting. And in fact, to get it off, you need a lot more energy than you do to put it on which is actually a really cool thing. So you never have to worry about trying to torque this thing back on when it's boiling hot and leave half your hand on the gun. Okay, so now that is the cock and balls of the Q Sugar Weasel. Now, Jarhead let me shoot this little gun a few times, and it does shoot great. It's simple and smooth. Since most of the parts are not very different from my fake-ass honey badger, this honestly doesn't feel much different other than the front end being a hell of a lot lighter, which makes it feel faster to transition between targets. And the massive volume of this silencer makes this thing stupid quiet with subsonic loads. And it's a lot of fun. It takes the bite out of even supersonics. Overall, this gun is as sexy as it is fun to shoot. The price is steep. But if you price out all the individual bits on your own, you're going to go up and spend pretty much that same amount of money to get this high quality. Wrong. Well, pretty close. You can do it on the cheap. Yeah, 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 I know. Y'all are going to let me know that in the comment section. But the barrel is clutch, and you are not going to be able to replicate this barrel unless you just buy the barrel direct from Q, which you can. And I would recommend, if you're going to build your gun on your own to try and do it on the cheap, you got to spend some money and get a really high quality barrel. And you can't do much better than this one. <laughs> what you talking about, Will? <laughs> That's going to about wrap it up for this week. I want to thank my buddy again, Jarhead, for loaning me this beauty and for everything he's done for our country. He's a great man, a great friend, and one hell of a drinker. Speaking of drunken patriots that have sacrificed for this country, be sure to go over and check out my brother, Dick, over his aptly named douchebags brother dick channel i will leave a link in the video description below thank you all for watching and remember i don't know who you are out there but i got a gun just not this one <laughs>